okay, is that better? Talk to you this morning about the Lee Center Roadmap Project. Um, my, my slide deck is available to you, and um, it, it ends up being content heavy and process heavy. And I'm gonna use my 15 minutes not to go into the details on the slides, but to try to give you the big picture and the big ask um, uh, for, this, for this project. I wanna thank Phil Yeski for helping me put this presentation together and, and certainly welcome back. When the UMDF began forming in 1997, um, we asked ourselves a couple of questions. Number one, what should the UMDF be about? Uh, is it a patient advocacy group or are we gonna to try to do something bigger uh, that would include involving the physicians uh, that take care of uh, people with mitochondrial disease, as well as what are we going to do about the researchers and uh, involve them within, and these are the scientists that work in laboratories, involve them into um, the workings of the UMDF. And the decision was to make a broad sweep uh, through the um, obviously the, the parents and families, as well as the clinicians that take care of people with mitochondrial disease and the basic scientists. And one of the first you know, projects that we got going by around 1998, 1999 was a grant program. And uh, the, the, the concept behind this is that the National Institutes of Health really didn't recognize mitochondrial disease or understand mitochondrial disease. No one was funding projects. And we wanted to be um, part of that um, community that funded research into mitochondrial medicine. And uh, the initial decision was made, we're gonna go after the best grants. We don't care if they're clinical or basic science. And many of the early grants had to do with, you know, subjects like mitochondrial DNA replication in yeast um, uh, and, and other types of projects that seemed to be so far away from patients uh, that there wasn't going to be relevance um, uh, to, to, at the patient level for many, many years. And we went through that process um, uh, diligently. And uh, the, the, the basic science research projects we started to receive got better and better and better. And we were actually able in that process to launch careers uh, for many um, scientists. And the big um, the, the big advantage of this is we brought scientists into the community. They made this their meeting to attend on an annual basis, and we were successful. Uh, the research we were funding was agnostic towards a uh, disease model. So we really weren't looking for a Lee syndrome project or a MELAS project or a current SARE project or a pediatric project or an adult project. We just wanted the best science. And we had, fund, we, had, we had potential donors come to us and say, I've got $50,000 to donate. I'd like to have a project on current air syndrome. And we actually tried to encourage them to donate the money, but, in the, it, but, but without the promise of funding uh, a particular um, disease model, because we didn't think at the time uh, that was the approach. So things have changed. And um, <clears throat> a decision was made to uh, several years ago to um, launch uh, a, a disease-focused um, uh, concept, a roadmap project, uh, to bring us, um, bring, bring the, 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 the science uh, closer to the patient level that will make a difference in how we take care of uh, people. And we, we ended up choosing Lee syndrome as a starting um, uh, for several reasons. So uh, so, some, some key points about the Lee Syndrome Roadmap Project, it's an international uh, collaboration with all the major mitochondrial patient advocacy groups in the world. Interestingly, the scientific community was never siloed. Uh, we didn't have, um, and you can see this by looking at the grants awarded by the UMDF. Um, some of these grants stayed in the United States, others went to Italy, others went to England, some went to Australia. So the scientific work wasn't siloed, um, but the patient advocacy groups were siloed. This brings all the patient advocacy groups together. Um, and, and they are actually in total funding uh, this project. Um, I had already mentioned that the research in the past was not disease oriented and open to basic science. The Lee syndrome roadmap project um, is disease focused on Lee syndrome and it is focused at the patient level, what's gonna make a difference for the patient. 
Uh, we also realized the voice of the consumer was changing over time. And if someone wanted to donate $50,000, and I just chose 50,000 as a random number, it could be $5, it could be 5 million um, for a disease model, we're gonna do what we can do to put that money to good use. Um, and the reason we chose Lee syndrome, again, there were, there, there were several. Number one, uh, this disease has been around since 1951. It has a poor prognosis. And you could argue that it has the worst outcomes of any uh, mitochondrial uh, phenotype. Uh, obviously no available therapies, which is true across um, almost all the mitochondrial diseases. And it also involves mutations in the mitochondrial DNA and nu nuclear DNA. So we thought it was a, a broad reaching um, uh, concept. So um, here are our, our, our partner groups, um, PALS Mitocon from Italy, Lilly Foundation from Britain, Mito Foundation from Australia, and of course the UMDF. One of the things that became obvious to um, all of us that work in the clinical field um, as um, companies started to approach the FDA, uh, and this started about 12, 13 years ago, uh, as the FDA said, well, uh, we're, we're glad that you're here to treat mitochondrial disease. Um, what are you going to use as your primary endpoint to prove um, that the medication that you're treating patients with uh, improves their outcome? Uh, FDA is concerned about two things, safety and outcome measures. And, uh, you know, with certain diseases, outcome is easy. Um, I, I spent 20 years of my life in brain tumor research. Outcome is time to survival uh, or time to relapse. Um, it's not so easy with mitochondrial disease. And I remember early discussions uh, with a company uh, no longer in existence, but it involved the PTC, a company named Medicine. They were back and forth with the FDA for several years, trying to figure out what they could agree upon as a reasonable outcome to measure stability or improvement. And the FDA had two comments. Number one, there's no natural history for Lee syndrome. And the argument went up, well, sure, we have a natural history. We've got 100 papers in the literature that show that this is a progressive illness and it's progressive over time. And the FDA said, that's not good enough. We want a prospective study on natural history of what happens to people with Lee syndrome. And of course, the, the second argument is we need to know what you're measuring to show that this drug works meaning uh, that if the natural, out, uh, natural dis, uh, history is progression, that you've actually um, changed that natural history uh, with, it, with the drug. So we decided um, that we needed to study three things within the Roadmap Project, natural history, development of clinically relevant endpoints, and preclinical models. So we formed a steering committee. Um, we, we formed a, a, a group of uh, physicians and scientists and patient uh, advocacy um, members that would help guide us in this process. And uh, I've got two minutes and I'm gonna really skip to the, the big ask here. Um, and the big ask is that we have a Lee syndrome roadmap project natural history study that is up and running. We need your participation. Right now, there are eight initial sites. One is open, that's Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. If you live anywhere near Philadelphia, um, you know, we, we would like you to participate in the study. Um, Akron is opening soon, UCSD is opening soon, and UT Southwestern is opening soon. I'm sorry, UT Houston, I'm sorry, UT Houston. Um, and th that's what's opening up in the United States. Um, so we need participation in this study. Um, we're, we're, you know, we think about Lee syndrome as being a, a pediatric illness, but we're including it to anyone who uh, has Lee syndrome, regardless of the age, genetically confirmed uh, with permission. Um, and uh, I'm just going to um, make a couple comments about our grant process is that we are funding grants in the preclinical space, that means pre-human, but focused on treatments that would translate into human therapy. 
Um, we funded about eight projects in the last two and a half years. Uh, some of these projects involve inexpensive medication um, that are available on the shelf right now um, uh, you know, within the United States. And if, uh, these are being done on pre-human models. So I think I'm gonna stop there and, and we'll get to questions in the Q&A later on. So thank you for your time.